We are moving on to monopolistic competition. It's chapter 16. As the name suggests, monopolistic competition is a hybrid of monopoly and perfect competition. As I mentioned before that monopolistic competition, it's a mashup of perfect competition and monopoly because some of its traits are like monopoly and some of its traits are like perfect competition. So like perfect competition, monopolistic competition also has a long run and a short run scenario. Apart from that, like perfect competition, they also have a chance to bear losses. Apart from that, let's begin with the characteristics I've mentioned. So the first one is there are large number of buyers and sellers. It means that there are so many buyers and sellers in the market, they don't have any influence on the prices. So this characteristic is exactly like perfect competition. And then there are low barriers to entry and exit. So this one is also a trait of perfect competition. There are low barriers or free entry, exit, but on a scale from perfect to imperfect market, monopolistic competition is comparatively expensive to enter as compared to perfect competition. But it's cheaper if you compare it setting up an oligopoly firm or a monopolist firm. So we assume there are low barriers to entry and exit and that's why there are so many buyers and sellers in the market. So the first two trades are like perfect competition. The third one is monopoly, which is they are price makers. Remember monopolist firms are also price makers. That is because the product is unique or it's differentiated, but for monopolistic competition, you see that the product is different, but the nature of commodity is same. So a good example is restaurant. Every restaurant serves food. So this make the nature same, but they all have a mini monopoly over the prices based on their speciality. Let's say some restaurants have good desi cuisine, some advertise based on good hamburgers, then some advertise with respect to good pizzas. So they all have different specialities and on those bases, they all have different prices. Apart from that, you have different brands of milk as well. So they all advertise in a manner which makes you believe that it's different. So there is a real differentiation as well and there is fake differentiation. Real differentiation is that the product is actually different with respect to quality or what they're offering. And then artificial differentiation is that they just make you believe the product is different just by advertisement or celebrity endorsement or just by changing the packaging. So we see so many milk brands, some advertise it's Australian cow, some says it's organic. So, but we never know it's same or not. And usually we know that most of the brands offer same milk. So the fourth one is because it's a price maker, it faces a typical downward sloping demand curve, exactly like Monopoly. And then the marginal revenue is also less than the demand curve. This trade is also like Monopoly. And the final one is there is a high need of advertisement. As I mentioned before that there is extreme branding in monopolistic competition. There can be different brands of milk, even different brands of toothbrushes. Like there is an angel head. You have the one with rubber grip or some has electric beep, which tells you that how much you need to brush. So if I, as a customer, I believe that rubber grip handles are good for my dental health, then the sellers can charge a heavy price, but definitely they cannot charge a very heavy price because there are other substitute goods available. But the point is they make you believe the commodity or the product is different or it's good for you. That's why you choose one brand for any commodity you buy. So monopolistic competitive firm, 
they operate on the basis of advertisement and remember advertisement can be real and it can be artificial too so for a comparison we have perfect competition demand curve monopolistic competition and monopoly so you're aware of perfect competition it faces a straight horizontal line in price is equal to average revenue which is equal to marginal revenue which is equal to demand curve but monopolistic competition demand curve is exactly similar to monopoly a downward sloping demand curve and a downward sloping marginal revenue and remember marginal revenue is less than the demand curve so the graph is exactly similar like monopoly and that's because they are a price maker they are not price taker and they are price maker based on uniqueness of their product and advertisement because branding makes you believe that the product is actually different whether it's not so this is a short run profit and loss case as i mentioned before that monopolistic competition has some similarities like perfect competition they also have a short run profit and loss scenario so this is a short run profit and loss case do not get haunted by two graphs here the reason is solely so you can compare so just focus on the profit case first you notice this is exactly similar like monopoly the graph is same like monopoly profit case the demand curve is downward sloping marginal revenue is less than the demand curve okay so you have the usual marginal cost curve and average total cost curve so for pro profit maximizing quantity you know the rule the point of the curves where marginal revenue cuts the marginal cost curve so this is your profit maximizing quantity you go up hit the average total cost curve that's your atc what will be your price exactly like monopoly you hit the demand curve and the parallel is your price what about profit so the profit is the area above the average total cost and below the price and demand curve so the graph as i mentioned is exactly similar like monopoly there is no change here and you notice that monopolistic competitive firms also charge a higher price so in order to have more sales they have to decrease the price and when you decrease the price definitely there will be more customers and as you're decreasing price your additional revenue will decrease that's why marginal revenue is less than the demand and price here but for the loss scenario i've drawn it on the same slide the reason is the graph is same the only difference is where average total cost lies so if you compare loss case with profit case you will notice in profit case average total cost curve the intersection is below the demand curve so that makes cost less than the price and you can earn some profit but for the loss case you notice average total cost curve is actually above the demand curve even the intersection is above the demand curve so that makes your price less than average total cost you know how to calculate atc in price and profit maximizing rule but this is a loss case there will be no profit maximizing rule there will be a loss minimizing quantity or loss minimizing rule so the point where marginal revenue cuts the marginal cost curve that's the loss minimizing quantity the concept is that if you produce more than this quantity more or less it means that your losses would be more so at this point you can decrease your loss so for the price and average total cost now you know atc is above the demand curve so you hit the demand curve you have the price and you go up to average total cost curve parallel you have average total cost 
So now you notice your cost is greater than the price. It means that you're not the total revenue, whatever you're earning, you're not able to meet the costs, the variable and fixed costs. So you're bearing a loss. This is a long run scenario of monopolistic competition. And in long run scenario, they earn zero economic profit. Zero economic profit is that their implicit and explicit costs are being covered, just like perfect competition. Remember, perfect competition has a long run and short run scenario. And in long run, their average total cost is exactly equal to total revenue. So it means that their implicit and explicit costs are being covered. So the graph is exactly similar to perfect competition. Apart from that, you know, the demand curve for perfect competition is a horizontal straight line. But apart from that, average total cost curve is equal to the demand and price. That's what happens in zero economic profit. But if you compare the zero economic profit with profit and loss scenario of monopolistic competition, you will notice that the whole graph is same apart from where average total cost curve lies. So remember in loss scenario, average total cost curve was above the demand curve. In profit scenario, average total cost curve was below the demand curve. But for zero economic profit, average total cost intersection is exactly at the demand curve. So that makes total revenue equals to total cost. This red shaded area is your TR and it's also your total cost. So again, you know the profit maximizing quantity, the area where marginal revenue intersects with marginal cost curve. You go up, hit the demand curve and your average total cost is also lying there. So that makes your price and total cost, even total revenue, same. So this shaded red region depicts your TR, which is equal to total cost.